I would like to introduce the idea of structures to you in C and C++. Let's assume that we wanted to uh, create a record, which is a, a good way of looking at this, and a grouping of related items, maybe of different types, and give them one name. Well, in C++, we would actually do that with a uh, uh, record, C and C++, actually. You can do it with classes or structures. Let's do ours. We're going to uh, create a record about a dog, so we're going to call this uh, a canine struct. So it starts off with the word struct, and then we give it a name. We'll call it uh, canine struct. Um, and now we're going to give it some uh, items that associate with it. I put a left curly bracket, and um, the sea lion um, environment here knows that a struct comes with a left curly bracket, it ends with a right curly bracket, and a semicolon. So it puts there there for us. Our canine structure will include four things. It will have a string, which is the dog name. It will have another string, which is the breed of the dog. And an integer, which is the dog's age. And then another integer, which is the dog's weight. You'll notice also that I put the definition of the structure up here in the global area. Um, I always put the uh, uh, global items in this order. I usually put the constants followed by the structure and the prototypes of my functions uh, because the uh, canine structures uh, may use some constants and the prototypes will probably use both of them. But let me make this point too that this structs definition does not set aside any storage. It just defines what the structure looks like. So nothing has been declared that can hold a dog's name, a breed, an age, or a weight. We're going to do that right now. We're going to go down here and we're going to say uh, a canine structure and we're going to call it my dog. Now with that definition uh, I have actually set aside storage and my dog can actually hold a name, a breed, an age, and a weight with just that one name. Let's go ahead and initialize this too. I'll show you how to do that. We'll say equal left curly bracket. Okay, and we'll give the dog's name. I'll choose Poncho. That was uh, our dog's name when I was a kid. He was an English sitter. We think. We're not really sure. Uh, let's say nine years old and about 30 pounds. So there is the there is the uh, 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 declare and initialize. Initialize. Well, let's print it out. <coughs> okay. How do you get to the individual components of that structure? Well, that's fairly easy enough to do. We use the dot uh, operator. So let's say I want to put out the dog's name. Well, I say see out. And I say my dog dot, and you'll notice when I say doc, it comes up with the things inside of that uh, structure. So I'll say dog name, and we'll say indel. So let's uh, build this, and let's see what it runs. And you'll see it says hello world, and it puts out Poncho. Well, changing them is also uh, easy enough to do. Let's take out Hello World. We don't need to print that out anymore. Well, let's say that we wanted to change the name. We want to give it another name. Okay. We'll say, well, my dog dot dog name is equal to, we'll just pick Fido. Okay. Now then, let's print out Fido. Go project and we'll run it and you'll see Fido indeed comes out. So that's how you access each individual component of it. You can print them out, you can use them actually, you can use them any place where a string, an a, uh, integer, or if you declared floating point numbers, booleans, uh, any place where those are allowed, these are allowed also. But this has an, uh, another advantage. Let's go in here and let's uh, create another structure and we'll call it okay. Uh, canine structure and then we'll say your dog okay and we're not going to give it any names okay we're going to say okay well your dog is equal to my dog let's try this and see what happens okay well, let's go down here 
and let's take this out and instead of my dog we'll say your dog okay well let's see what happens okay let's build it build the project everything seems okay and we're going to run it and indeed what happens well now look what happens here let me isolate this so you can see it I said my dog is equal to your dog and essentially what happens is it took all of the values dog name the breed the age and the weight and gave it from one entire record to the other so it's like a, a mass copy which is very very handy very handy indeed these are basic structures um, uh, very useful to uh, work with and the precursor to object-oriented classes uh, try these out uh, play around a little bit practice uh, printing them out reading them in and changing them around like I said they can be used any place where uh, their their basic types are allowed uh, subsequent videos here are going to show you how to use them in arrays, pointers, and uh, dynamic storage allocations. So we're going to do those videos next and uh, look out for those. Hope you enjoyed this. Looking forward to doing another one.